I'm so in awe of you because, <laughs> because um, all for the last 20 years, all I've heard is, is that song, Sunrise Sunset, played at every single Jewish function. <laughs> Whether it's a marriage, whether it's a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, whatever it is, they play this and people sing it. I don't know where that lyric came from. I do. It's from reading all the Shalom Aleichem because Jerry Bach sent me a tape with that music on it. And I listened to the music and as I continued to listen it, to, to, as I continue to listen to it, the words from somewhere just crystallized on a melody and there it was. And I remember Jerry at that time lived in New Rochelle. He had a studio in the basement. We called his wife down, Patty, and we played it for her. I didn't look at, I never look at anybody when we audition. But at the end of it, I looked at her and she was crying. And I thought, my goodness, that, that's interesting. And then shortly after that, I was in Bethesda, Washington, where my sister lived. And since Sunrise Sunset is simple enough musically so that even I could play it, I played it for her, and when I looked at her, she was crying, and I thought, we really have something here. I wonder where this came from. I just think it's one of those songs that will, that will live forever. Um, there are very few. Yeah, Shall Jerry and I used to wonder whether we should write a song to be played at divorces. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> the big fight I had, I'll never forget with the with the Mirish people was when I, <clears throat> I said I had signed John Williams as the conductor and the, uh, and the composer for the film. And Johnny, you know, we all know is, is a brilliant, brilliant conductor, composer, probably one of the best in the world. So I knew I was in safe hands. And so I was sitting talking to Johnny one day and I said, you know, yeah, da, 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 da. You know, who's gonna play that? <laughs> I mean, who is, who's the best fiddler in the world? And he said, without a blink of an eye, he said, Isaac Stern. And I said, yeah. How do we get Isaac Stern <laughs> to play the fiddle? And he said, you ask him. <laughs> and I said, do you think? Do you think we could get him? Do you think he would play this? And I, fl <laughs> I called someone who represented Mr. Stern in New York, and they said, he's in Chicago performing with the Chicago Symphony. And I said, where is he? And they said, what do you mean, where is he? I said, where's he living? And they said, well, he's in an apartment. Someone gave him, and he rehearses there. So I said, well, when does he go on stage? Could I go and see him? Because I knew I was going to have to sell him on this idea and I went to Chicago, and I went to this apartment building. I remember on dark night, and I, I came out and I, of the elevator, and I walked to the door, and I heard, <laughs> and he's working away in rehearsing. And I thought, oh my God, I don't want, and I, I went, so then, <laughs> and something happened and I knocked on the door and then it started again. <laughs> and I thought, I screwed it up. I thought it was the end of the thing. And I, it was just a pause and he had a pianist. There was a piano going. So he's playing and the music got louder and louder, came to the door and de da de da de da da Open the door, ba da de da, and and he opened the door and he said, "Jewison," I said, "Yes," <laughs> and he kept working away and he said, "Scotch in the kitchen, ice and the soda water's there." <laughs> so I went in and made two scotch and sodas, and listened to him play this this uh, 
Beethoven symphony that he was working on, and he had to perform that the next night. And he finished, and he came in, and I said, I'm here because I wanted to look in your eyes and tell you that there was only one person, there's only one fiddle player in the world who should play this, and it's you. And I want you to tell me how much it's going to cost <laughs> <laughs> to get you to play. Yeah, da, 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 <laughs> da, yeah. And he, he said, about a quarter tone flat. <laughs> you got to play that a quarter tone flat. <laughs> and that was his idea. And he, he said, look, I'll do the, I'll do the film, because you have John Williams, and he's one of the best conductor composers going. He said, but I've got, a, I, I got, I've got this problem of being booked everywhere. And he brought out a book, I've never seen anything like it, big black book, and he says, now when are you recording? And I gave him a date, July something in London, and I need you for three days. Three days. Jesus, next July. I'm in Argentina. <laughs> I mean, I was, and he started going through, and I must say, Isaac Stern was the busiest man <laughs> I have ever seen. I mean, and he was committed to all these, these things, and we finally got him for three days in July with the London Symphony, and, uh, and it was just remarkable. It was, he told me about his uncle, who was a used to get drunk and climb up onto the roof and play the fiddle. <laughs> and, and all of these stories he had. Um, and he was devoted. He was devoted to, to Jerry Bach's music and his score, and he was devoted to this film.